Hey guys, it's Tiffany. Today, I'm gonna show you how to multiply and divide integers. Multiplying and dividing integers. Remember that when dealing with negative multiplication and division operations of integers, there will always be two terms that are negative and one term that is positive. I know that's a lot of words. Let me show you an example of what that means. Here, in this example, we have negative five times two equals negative 10. We have two of our terms that are negative. All three of these numbers are the terms. They are what I mean when I'm referring to the word term. So negative five is a term, two is a term, and negative 10 is a term. This sentence says that there will be two terms that are negative and one term that is positive. So in this case, our negative five and our negative 10, those are our two negative terms. The positive term is the two. Guess what? It does not matter where these items are positioned. The positive term could be part of the problem or the positive term could be the answer. Here's another example. We have negative 24 divided by negative six and that equals four. In this case, the positive is in our answer, okay? The two negative terms are in the problem. So really, it does not matter where your negative or your positive is. It's just a matter of if you see any kind of negative numbers going on, remember, if it's a problem where it's two digits equaling an answer, which is a total of three terms, you're going to have two of those terms be negative and one of those terms will be positive. Let's move on to example number one. Example number one, I have seven times six. The answer to seven times six is 42. There should be no negative on the answer to this problem. The reason I wanted to start off with this is because so many times I remember students getting this mixed up. Students think, oh, because I'm working in the section in my math book that's dealing with integers, this problem must have a negative answer. No. The rule is when there are negatives involved in the problem, you're going to have two negatives. In this case, you know your answer is going to be a single term. It's only 42. You're not going to come out with two answers. So you can't just say, oh, it's going to be negative, because then that would make your problem have a positive, a positive, and a negative, and that doesn't work. It's always got to be two negatives and one positive. So what does all this mean? All of this means that when you're dealing with whole numbers, those are also integers. So in the middle of your book or your worksheet or whatever problems your teacher may give you to work out, those numbers could look like negative numbers or they could look like positive numbers and those are still integers. Only when you see problems that are integers that have negatives in them do you remember this rule. Let's move on to example number two. Example number two, okay, I have a negative. That means we must follow the rule two portions or two terms in my problem must be negative and one term in my problem must be positive. So we're going to multiply our two numbers like normal and then it's just the sign that we have to determine. For this example we have 15. For this example we have negative 15 times 10. I'm going to multiply the numbers without considering the negative sign right now. I can multiply it 15 times 10 pretty easily in my head because any number times 10 just really means add a zero to the end of the other number. So that means that our answer would be 150. But this is our answer for only our numbers. Now we're going to look at the fact that we have a negative sign. So if you remember my rule from the beginning, I said that when you have three terms, you have your two terms that make up your problem and then you have your answer. Two of them must be negative and one of them must be positive, okay? You can never change the sign of part of your problem. So if there's a negative here, that means the answer must have a negative, okay? Let's move on to example number three. 
example number three. This time I have negative 23 times negative 4. Okay, remember what I did before? Let's go ahead and solve the problem without considering the negative signs. I have 23 times 4. I don't know what that is off the top of my head, so I'm going to come to the side of my paper and work it out. 23 times 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times 2 is 8 plus 1 is 9. So the answer is 92, but we must calculate the positive and negative scenario. Our problem does have um, negatives in it, so that means I do need to consider the rule of two negatives and one positive. And it looks like because our original problem already had two negatives, one negative sign on each of the terms, our answer is just going to stay positive because we have to have one positive. So I'm going to circle this 92. So the answer to example number three is just plain old 92. Let's move on to example number four. Example number four. Okay, this time we need to divide. Okay, we have 126 divided by 2. We need a crisscross applesauce. If you do not know what I'm talking about when I say crisscross applesauce, you may want to check out my long division with whole numbers video and I help explain how to set up division. We are going to, to divide 2 into 126. Right now we are not going to factor in the fact that there is a sign. We will only factor that in once we get our answer. So 2 going in 12 goes in 6 times and it is 12. I'm going to subtract and get 0. Then I bring down my 6. 2 goes into 6 3 times. I have nothing else to bring down so it looks like we got our answer correct. So 63 is my answer, but I need to figure out my sign. Let's see, one of our original numbers, one of our original terms does have a negative sign. So the rule is we must have two negative signs and one positive sign between the three terms. The two that make up our problem and the one that's our answer. So if we have one negative, we have a positive also in the beginning. This one must be negative because we must end with two. So the answer to example number four is negative 63. Example number five. We have another division problem. I'm going to crisscross applesauce again. I'm not going to worry about my signs just yet. I'm going to divide seven into 392. Seven goes into 39 five times. And that is 35. I subtract and get 4, bring down a 2. 7 goes into 42 6 times. And it goes in evenly, so I'm going to subtract and get a 0. Whenever I end with a 0, I know that I probably solved my problem correctly. 56 is my answer, but remember that is my answer without considering any type of negative sign that it may or may not have. Now let's go back and check to see. Let's see, we have a negative here, we have a negative here. That means we have two parts already that are negative and we need two. And then we need to have one positive. So it's going to remain positive. So the answer to example number five is 56. That was my last example. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, don't forget to click like, then head over to SuperEasyMath.com for more math tutorials, printable video notes, worksheets, and more.